Hey guys, it's going to Delmar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel and I really appreciate your time. Today I also want to invite you to subscribe to the channel by clicking on the button below. That's going to really help me in growing this amazing community. And today I'm going to continue the HDRP videos for Unity. HDRP is the high definition rendering pipeline that Unity released as a preview recently. So we're going to be continuing and doing more post-processing effects. I have four more effects that I want to show you how to do. So. Let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, welcome back. And today I'm going to be covering, like I said in the introduction, the HDRP post-processing effects. I've been doing quite a bit of effects as of, you know, this being the, the fifth video of the series. And we basically cover all of these different effects, which is which is really, really cool because I've been even touching ones that I haven't that I haven't had to use in the past. So what I'm going to be doing in this series is cover a couple of more effects. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a new folder, just like I've been doing on every other video. This one is going to be called video five. And what we're going to do is we're going to clone, just like we did in every other one, just clone the, the, two, the two components that make up the post-processing, which is the volume, the volumetric, and also the post-processing. So I'm going to drag them and drop them into video five. And then we're just gonna rename it. And the reason I do this is so that you can go back to the previous scenes and be able to check this through GitHub. And okay, so looks like that one is good. And then let's go back into scenes and let's just go ahead and clone video underscore four. And we're gonna be focusing on video five. So that should be the one that we have selected. The other thing that I'm gonna do is just like I do in every video is let's go ahead and select the new profile which is going to be 5 and also the same thing for the volumetric folk volume it's going to be 5 all right so I think we should be good now let's go ahead and focus on this area so we've been applying a lot of different effects and I think we're getting we're getting a really cool really cool look so in this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some other effects like I said initially and with this one we can look at some more post-processing so I'm gonna go ahead and select the white balance so that we can see how this could affect the scene. And I'm gonna be changing the, basically changing the temperature to give it more of a blue, you know, blue, bluish color. Also, we can go ahead and select the tint. And you can see how that is also affecting, affecting the scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, do something like that. So that's what the, ba the white balance does. It gives you access to the temperature and also the tint. So, you know, this is more, if you want it to be more of a reddish uh, or blue, I think I'm gonna go with blue. I like that, I like that style. And let's go ahead and go into the procedural sky. And I think the sun is just killing the scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little smaller. And in fact, we can there we go, we can make it a little tinier by changing some of these settings. And let's see, we have in here, I can do something like that. Exposure can be lower, and I think that, I think that should be good. Let's go ahead and select the vignetting on this one. And I think vignetting, let's see, we'll make vignetting a little bit stronger. You can see how if we make vignetting, we change the smoothness on vignetting, it affects it. So I like, I want to go with that style. And, okay, let's go ahead and go back to the sun. So if I remove the sun disk, just debating whether whether I'm going to leave it or not. And also the sky tint, so we can change. If we go with more of a, there we go, that's what I'm, kind of like matching the, matching the color that I'm going to be assigning to the scene, which is going to be blue. Let's see, we can do, maybe we do something like that, I think that works, and if I go big with this, it's going to basically kill the scene, uh, let's go ahead and change the thickness, let's go back down here, and, and just like I said in every video, this is, oh I like that, I like that look, this is just a matter of tweaking and, and you know, getting getting the look that you want, and let's see the penny projection if we can, so as to crop it, we can go, okay, we can go something like that. I think that works. 
So I think I'm good with those on the exposure. I'm gonna do something like that. I think exposure is fine. Tone mapping, we did ACS, which is the one that I that I really like. And then indirect lighting, you can kind of see how that, that looks really cool. We're still getting a lot of shadows and a little bit of lighting as we change the diffuse intensity. So we could, let's go ahead and do, Go ahead and do something something darker, and let's see color curves. We can see how we can override them. Just go ahead and override the color curve, and I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that look. See how the the sun is changing as I'm changing the curve. So that actually, I think I like. I think I like that. Something like that, I think that works. And the gamma. I, I'm gonna go with, let's go ahead and undo. I think, I think we had it. I'm not gonna change the gamma. Okay, so as far as like the Y balance, which is what I was showing you as a new component. So we can see that, how we can tweak the temperature. And if we wanted to go, you know, much darker, we wanna go, lighter I can change that I can also change the tint so you think the tint I think right about there it's a cool look all right so let's look at another another effect so so that was the white balance so if we go back to post processing and one that I haven't that I haven't shown you yet it's the shadows mild mid tones and highlights so let's go ahead and play with this one and see what we can get and you can see that if I change the shadows, I'm also getting more control. So you get a lot of control with all these components. I can also change the color. And I think I'm gonna go, I like the red, but I don't wanna lose the red. So I think I'm gonna go with something like that. So if we do meat tones, we can also make some dramatic changes. You can see that we're changing a little bit of the light on this area and, and I like how that looks. Let's see if I change okay so I think I think I like that. Let's go ahead and mess with the highlights. And the highlights we're getting some weird highlights so I'm not gonna I'm just gonna disable it. I don't think it's helping us here. We can also change the star and the end of the shadow limits if we wanted to. Let's see how that is changing. So I think I'm gonna go and don't even mess with the shadow limits. The highlight limits, we're not gonna use them because we're not using that component. And let me just make some more changes in here. Okay, I think I like that. So now let's look at using another component, which I, I think I briefly talked about in the beginning of the series, and that is the bloom. And if we increment the bloom, you can kind of see how we're getting, we're getting some changes. The only thing that I don't like about the intensity of the bloom, in a spe specific with this scene, is that it ma it's making it blur. And I want the car to stand out, so it bugs me to, to lose the definition. But we can play with some of these settings and see if we get the look that we want. So you can change the intensity, you can change the scatter, you can also change the tint. So if I wanted to make this, you know, come out, and I'm gonna make it red, and you can kind of see that I can change, can make this a very, very bright red. Bloom coming out is actually looking, looking really cool. So if I do and something like, I think something about there works. And we also have an advanced options in the Bloom that we can set. Right now we don't have a resolution set. We can set it if we want it to be a quarter of a resolution if you want it to be half. So if you do half you're getting you know better. So see if I do quarter you can kind of see how I'm getting some changes. I can ch do the high qualify filtering and pre-filter. I haven't really messed with these these two and so I'm gonna just disable those and also this one I haven't messed with that one. So the resolution is the one that I think it's going to so you can kind of see that we're getting a little tooltip 
resolution at which the effect will be done. Color resolution is faster and recommended for very high resolutions, 4K or, or consoles. So if I do half, we're getting, we're gonna get, I guess that's less, that's less of a impact on performance. But if we do quarter, I think that makes it look really cool. So if I go, let's go ahead and do something like that. I think I like that. What happens if I select blue? If I select blue, you can kind of see that we're getting a lot of the blue. So I'm gonna do, just go ahead and undo. I think I like how the red look like. And I think that shadows and bloom and also white balance. Let's see if we can, if we can apply one more, one more effect. And that could be that we look at the channel mixer. Channel mixer is cool because you can make changes to red, green, or blue. So if I do say that I wanted to focus on blue, because that's kind of that's kind of what we I want these to come out and see if we can. So let's go ahead and select the blue and see how we can make some changes. I want the blue to really stand out and you can see that by changing the blue in this scene that's making it see how we can affect the red. So if I want to if I don't want the red to come out as much I can just increment it a little bit here. And then the green I'm not gonna even mess around with. So let's go ahead and make some more changes because I don't know that I that I'm pretty happy with how this looks like just yet. So let's go back into color adjustments and let's see if I can make a couple more changes until I get the look that I want. And I think that looks, so you can see how I can make changes to the saturation. That <laughs> looks really cool. It's like a black, like a dark, uh, like a no color, black and white color. And you can do something like that, I think, I like that. All right, so let's go back into a bloom. The bloom is still killing the scene. Like I don't really like how this is looking. So I think I'm gonna go, and if I uncheck it, you can see that it actually looks cool, even if we don't have it, we don't even have a set. So what if we just bring it down a little bit more? Let's bring it down, let's just do a little bit of bloom. Then in the red, we can just do something like that. I think that that works. And let's go ahead and look at the directional light and see how we can affect the, if we change the intensity. So I'm gonna go back down to the intensity. And I think I'm just gonna do just a tiny bit. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into, let's go into our light. See how we can and I'm just gonna select local here. See if we can get, change the rotation. I want the shadows to also stand out. Kind of see how we're making real time changes. And let's go ahead and focus on our car. Let's go back in here and there we go. It's a little bit of a dark scene. And, and that's okay. So let's go back into post-processing and see how we can we can make some more changes so that we have a better look. And in the procedural sky, let's make it a little bit bigger here. And I'm gonna just resize this window. Okay, so I think I'm, I think I'm happy with what we're getting as far as like the look of the car. There we go. And okay, let's go back into post processing and I'll make a few more changes and then I think I, I think we'll be good. So let me look at the intensity of the of the chromatic. I think that looks good there. And let's look at indirect lighting. Indirect lighting looks cool. Okay, and Let's just go ahead and uncheck the indirect specular because it's really not making a lot of changes. The ambient occlusion, uh, I think, is something like that looks good. I'm gonna go and let's look at the lighting one more time. Indirect lighting. All right, I think that looks a lot better. And let's look at color curve. I 
think something like that. I think that works really good. Excellent. And then lastly, let's look at color adjustment adjustment one more time until I get the look that I'm looking for. And I think I think that looks really cool. So the we can't really see the sun, but that's okay. I wanted the sun to I wanted to change the lighting so that we could see more of the shadows on this area. And, and just like I showed you, if I you know if I change the rotation, say that the sun is moving. You can see how that is affecting the the look of the car and everything is basically rendering in real time which is really crazy so I think for the car I think I'm gonna do the lighting I think the lighting should be okay right about there and, and I'm gonna call it good I think this looks really cool and I'm gonna be doing a lot of a lot more videos on HDRP I think the next ones that I'm gonna be doing are gonna be focused on materials and also lighting so just stay tuned for more all right guys thank you very much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions please let me know also be sure to check out gamedev.net they have amazing tutorials for game developers also check me out in patreon where i'm posting information about what's happening behind the scenes with my channel what's happening with my games and everything that i'm doing and also early access to source code so thank you very much guys